This is One on One. That's Kelly Thomas, barrel racing in a rodeo. The Florida native was an active teenager riding horses, playing soccer, and working on the family farm. Then, disaster. July 2014. A car accident left Kelly paralyzed in a wheelchair with her doctor saying she would never walk again. Steve Adubato on location at Kessler Foundation. We're here for a very important forum, a discussion. It's called uh, Transforming Care and Recovery for People with Spinal Cord Injury. And uh, we're honored to be joined by one of the research participants here tonight. By the way, excuse the sound behind us. A lot of people want to be a part of this conversation. They want to listen and participate. So just bear with us. But Kelly Thomas is a research participant. Um, Kelly, in 2014, you were involved in a car accident. I was. Talk about the injuries. Um, well, I have a C7, T1 spinal cord injury. Um, it's incomplete, so I have sensation, but I didn't have any motor. So my accident was a rollover motor vehicle accident. I ran off the shoulder of the road, flipped my vehicle four times, and was uh, hanging half in, half out of the vehicle whenever, thank God, a retired paramedic was walking his dog down the street and saved my life. You know, we were talking right before we got on the air, and I asked Kelly about being a research participant. And you're going to demonstrate something tonight, very important, uh, movement that was not possible how long ago? Uh, five years this year. And by the way, Kelly's a part of, uh, she's involved with epidural stimulation. Yes. And before I go back to how tough it was to make the decision to actually be a participant, ex explain to folks what epidural stimulation is. Um, so what the epidural stimulator is, is it's a spinal implant and the spinal electrode lays in my lower lumbar spine and I have um, a battery that's actually implanted in my uh, lower abdomen, my lower left abdomen, and it has all the data in it that has different configurations that helps me facilitate movement. So many people have this epidural stimulator. It's a Medtronic device um, and people use it for pain all the time to block the signals of, of pain and I use it for movement. How much has it changed your life? Dramatically. I saw. Dramatically. Um, well, I, whenever I suffered my spinal cord injury, I asked my neurosurgeon eye to eye. I said, what are my chances of ever walking again? And he said, uh, I won't say zero, but maybe one or two percent. And I said, okay, I'll be here one or two percent. And I worked and worked as hard as I possibly could. And I had made progress, but I kind of hit a plateau, hit a wall, and I needed something more. And this epidural simulator was available. And I moved to Kentucky for a year and a half, and I did what I was told I would never do again. And so now I'm able to go out into the community and walk, and it's fantastic being eye level with other people. Professionally, your background. Um, well, professionally, I'm an amateur. <laughs> Um, I'm a college student. Uh, I was actually going to school for physical therapy whenever I had my accident. Um, but I've changed my major, so I'm a criminal justice major. I, uh, really? I'm a senior, yes, so I'll finish my uh, criminal justice degree in May, and um, I'll go to law school. You're going to law school. I am. You're going to become a lawyer. Yes. Any particular kind of law you want to focus on? Uh, criminal, criminal law. Criminal law. Yes. You were a little bit reluctant to become a research participant. I was. Because? I was afraid. I was skeptical. Uh, the other research participants at that time had not really reached a level of success that I was looking for. I wanted to walk. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be the biggest and best at it, kind of my nature. Um, so they had gotten one or two things back. You know, they had regained the ability to sweat, they could stand, but I wanted to walk and none of them at that point were walking and that what if got into my brain, what if I'm the one that figures it out? What if I'm the one that walks? Were you always this tough? Yes, I was <laughs> raised on a farm, I was raised by cowboys. So I was taught my whole life that you don't try at things, you do things. So. We are honored to have you with us tonight. Oh, honored you. to listen to 
you share your experience, and we look forward to, uh, most importantly, your continued progress and yes. success. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Atlantic Health System, Johnson & Johnson, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, Suez, Georgian Court University, the law firm of Gibbons PC, and by Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters. Promotional support provided by bestofnj.com and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.